While I don't think it's one of the top needs for the Carolina Panthers entering the draft, linebacker is a position the Panthers may need to address. We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started today. All right, let's get back into it. It's draft season, and man, I'm kind of pumped up. I wondered last year, to be honest with y'all, when the Panthers traded up to get Bryce Young number one overall and gave up their first round pick in 2024, how I was going to talk about the draft without a first round pick, but it's actually been kind of easy. And really three years ago, when I first started doing locked on Panthers, I had difficulty covering the draft because the draft's never been my number one thing that I love about the NFL. Like I love the games. I do love free agency and all that. The draft was probably like my least favorite, but as I've gone about the last couple of years, I've started to really appreciate the draft, especially as someone who does a daily podcast because it gives me something to talk about. And even sitting in this draft cycle where it feels like there's not that much more to say about what the Panthers should potentially do at 33 or 39 or 65, 141, 142. And I forget what the pick they also have later on in seven round is, but still, you know, it's nice to have the draft here and have people excited. Now that Dave Canales is here, Dan Morgan, Brant Tillis did a, a pretty good job so far as far as how things went out in free agency. People are excited. I'm excited, and I'm excited to talk to you today after spending an entire show talking about the center position, which is just nuts. That That's what I do here. I went upstairs after doing the podcast last night. My girlfriend's like, how's the pod? It's like, I just spent 30 minutes talking about whether the Panthers should draft the center, and if they do, who should they take? It's like fun. Yeah, it is fun. We talk a lot about the offensive line here on Locked On Panthers. And just as a Panther fan base, let's focus in on the linebacker position on today's show. This is not at all the top need for the Panthers heading into the draft. Wide receiver, I still feel like if at 33, there's a top guy, take him. Center, as we talked about, I still believe that's a position the Panthers need to address during the draft later on this month edge rusher now with Clowney and want him and bring in Caleb on chase on. It's not as big of a need as it was when gross motto signed in San Francisco. Of course, the Panthers trade away Brian Burns, but I still look at it as a need corner is a need for this team. You could even say defensive lines, a need safety is a need much like the way linebacker is a need for the Panthers. Now, Carolina heads into 2024 with Shaq Thompson and Josie Jewell atop of the depth chart as their starting linebackers. But by the end of the 2024 season, both of them are going to be 30 years old. And looking at their deals, they're not going to be long-term players in Carolina. And that goes back to the trend of how things worked out so far this offseason with a lot of the free agent deals. Dane Jackson playing at corner, he wasn't given a long-term deal. Nick Scott and Jordan Fuller playing at safety. Both were given one-year deals. Sean Robinson on the defensive line was not given a long-term deal. Derek Brown, though, he's been extended. Happy about that. We talked about that on Friday for an emergency edition on the show live on YouTube and, of course, in your podcast feeds. He's here to stay. J.C. Horn will figure out whether the Panthers exercise that 50 year option. We'll, of course, discuss that when the time comes. But right now, I don't know whether that's the right decision for the Panthers to make. And there's some serious questions about whether he can stay healthy, as we all know. So outside of Derek Brown, you can't point to a single player on this defense who you know is going to be here 
for the long haul during this rebuild under Canales, Morgan, and Brant Tillis with Bryce Young as the starting quarterback and hopeful franchise quarterback. So looking at linebacker, it's pretty much the same case with two linebackers who are headed to be 30 years old. And that's the unfortunate thing about not being able to get Frankie Luvu, because had you re-signed Frankie, you would have had him for the next three or four years or so. And then you could have drafted someone to be his running mate. But now they're in a position where Shaq Thompson, this is probably the last year for Shaq in Carolina. He turns 30 on April 21st, the Sunday leading into draft week. He's going to be 30 years old, coming off of a significant lower leg fracture that suffered on Monday Night Football against New Orleans. There's some questions, too, of whether he'll be ready to go for OTAs and if he'll be out there for mandatory minicamp and what Shaq's going to look like once Panthers do truly put pads on come August and, of course, come September when a regular season starts. That's going to be tough to see how he's able to come back. He's been really good for the Panthers. I know there's some fans back when he got a new deal during the 2019 season who didn't understand why are they extending Shaq? Well, Shaq's been really good for you, and he's been a durable player who's had to deal with his knee injuries. He had to deal with the, the foot as well, and then last year was the most significant he's dealt with, but he's been largely available for the Carolina Panthers, and he's been a leader in that locker room, and it's Unfortunate when you think about players like Brian Burns, who's no longer here, Gross Matos, who to a lesser extent, he's no longer here as far as what his impact was. But Dante Jackson's gone, Frankie Louvu's gone, his brothers. And Shaq talked about last year when a fan really was chastising him on Twitter, because that's what y'all like to do is you know act all big on Twitter, even though you would never say this to these players' faces, saying, Oh, Shaq Thompson overpaid, doesn't need to. Yeah, you need to cut Shaq, screw that. And he's saying, would you take a pay cut at your job? And most people probably wouldn't do it. Now, Shaq ended up doing that because he wanted to be in Carolina, and he said he wanted to win a Super Bowl here in Carolina. And that was wishful thinking, the whole Super Bowl part, because I don't think Shaq Thompson is going to be around long enough to see that through if the day does come. And I hope the day does come to Carolina Panthers hoist up the Lombardi Trophy. Shaq Thompson is highly unlikely to be a Carolina Panther because he's going to be 30 in 12 days time or I guess 11 days time. And he's entering into the last year of his deal. He's going to be a free agent after the season. There are three void years on his contract. Maybe the Panthers give him another year just to try and figure a way to get rid of those void years. And that's one of the things I like about what Brand Tills has done so far as Panthers, EVP of football operations, handling the cap and contracts, no void years, no roster bonuses, none of that nonsense. We're going to figure out, what the pay guys we really value, and then guys that we need to come in just fill a spot for a year, not going to give them a ton of money, not going to be taking on dead cap money once they are no longer on the roster. But it feels like this is probably it for Shaq. Looking at Josie Jewell, I think he'll be around probably for two seasons. As long as he plays well, we know that last year, Miles Sanders, he signed a three-year deal, four-year deal, rather. Hayden Hurst signed a three-year deal. Even Bron Bell signed a three-year deal. Bon Bell is better than those two but he's no longer here in Carolina because he was not necessarily as much of a scheme fit as, I guess, Fuller and Scott are seen to be in the Gerald Vero's defense at the safety spot. And then when you look at Hayden Hurst, just a galactic failure at the tight end position, had the injury to his brain with concussion. Hopefully he'll be fine. Now he's playing out there in L.A. with Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers. He failed to produce for the Panthers, leading Tommy Trimble to be in a spot where he's tight end one. Trimble, Trimble, Trimble Hive, where are you at? Uh, but Josie Jewell, though, I still feel like he's probably going to get two seasons. He played well under Ruggiero, understands the scheme, even if he only played one year in it. Looking at his deal, it's three years, $18.75 million. It's $10.125 million fully guaranteed, including a $7 million bonus. So really, it's a signing bonus, and he has some guaranteed money this year uh, and $2 million guaranteed in 2025. Again, no roster bonus. But the Panthers can't really get rid of him with – and then really – um. Uh, benefit salary cap wise after this season, they would only save seven hundred and sixty six thousand and dollars as far as the salary cap goes, and then they would have to take on six point six million in dead money. That kind of feels like a non starter for a player who, unless he gets injured and this is a complete disaster, it looks like he'll be back at least for the twenty twenty five season. And the real deal, as far as like the real out in his deal, comes after twenty twenty five during the twenty twenty six new league year, where the Panthers could save five and a half million. Cap wise, and then 2.3 million dead money wise. It's possible that Josie Jewell gets all three years of his deal, especially if he plays well. And it's also dependent upon what the Panthers do in the draft this year, what they do in a draft in uh, 2025, and what they do 
in a draft in 2026 if he's able to hang on as a Panther by draft time in April of 2026. He'll be 30 on Christmas Day. So he's a Christmas baby. That's nice to hear for Josie Jewell. He's going to be around for this fall and next fall. Shaq, probably it. And that's a trend among the defense. As I mentioned, outside of Derek Brown, no one signed for the long haul, and we do not know who's going to be playing on the defensive line next to Derek Brown in a couple of years' time. We don't know who's going to be the starting linebackers three years down the road. We don't even know who's going to be the starting corner and safety. The Panthers are having to rebuild their defense. They've done that with some cheap veterans who are entering into their second contract after their rookie deal, but are any of them around for the long haul? At linebacker, they didn't sign anyone other than Josie Jewell. And you look at the Clotten Charlises and you look at the Chandler Wootens and Luigi Villanis who sit back there, hard to see them stepping up and being that answer. So where it's the best way to find an answer in the middle of your defense, that's cheap. It's in the draft at linebacker. And there's one player in particular that we've talked about and who I would love to see here in Carolina. And his name is Peyton Wilson. We'll talk about him in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers, and that could be you, get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Guaranteed, y'all. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. And probably draw as well. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? Seriously, get on it. North Carolina, we have had FanDuel, we've had sports betting since March 11th. Why have you not done this? I had a friend this past week and was over here at my house watching the Final Four. Hadn't signed up for any of the apps. Why? What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Automatic, y'all. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If the Panthers do, in fact, draft a linebacker later on this month up in Detroit, it needs to be Peyton Wilson. Like for me, it's Peyton Wilson or Bust. Not, I guess, maybe not or Bust. But when I look at the rest of the linebacker class, while there are some guys I like, and we'll talk about them a little bit later on the show here, the guy I absolutely love is Peyton Wilson. Asked Jordan Reed about him on Monday. Uh, I talked about him last week with Trevor Sikama, PFF. Peyton Wilson is a dog. This is the kind of player that Dan Morgan was talking about. This is the kind of Panther you want. And when you look back at the pass at the linebackers, you think about keep pounding the slogan, where it came from, Sam Mills. That's the kind of player I feel like Peyton Wilson can be in Carolina. He can be a John Beeson. He can be a Thomas Davis. He can be a Luke Keekley. He can be the heart and soul of the Carolina Panthers defense. And I want that to be the case. And speaking of, of Luke Keekley, Cassidy Hill, who's one of the writers for Panthers.com, working with my buddy Darren Gantt. She did a great article with him talking about Luke Keekley and Luke Keekley's impact on Peyton Wilson. This is what Peyton Wilson had to say about Luke Keekley saying, I think every linebacker should try to be like Luke Keekley, considering he was literally the best to ever do it. That's his opinion. Obviously, his career was shortened due to concussions, but I think if he had had the longevity that other linebackers had, there would be no question of who is the best linebacker ever. And I think there's no question as well, Peyton, that Luke Keekley is going to have a bust in camp. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He may not have played for 12, 13, 14 years. He may not have the longevity of a Ray Lewis, but that man is one of the best to ever do it and on an all-decade team. You cannot tell the story of the National Football League without talking about Luke Keekley calling out plays, having quarterbacks just sitting there wondering, how the hell does this man know every single play because of film study? And Peyton Wilson brought up the fact that he sat down and he's – Watch film with Luke Keekley saying, I've talked to him about how he breaks down film. And we talked about that through the last few, few years. And just everything he's told me is some of the reasons I played the way I did this past year. You looked at Peyton Wilson this past season at NC State. The dude was out of this world, y'all. And it's coming from a North Carolina Tar Heel. But I have a ton of respect for Peyton Wilson. Because one day, once upon a time, he did want to be a Tar Heel. He did. Then he said, I'm, I'm too much of a country boy. I'm going to head to Raleigh, even though it's a campus full of bricks in the middle of a city and not out in the country like Greenville and ECU. But still, he felt more at home 
playing under Dave Doran and Raleigh for that defense and makes sense. <laughs> that defense is really good. The one in Chapel Hill is really bad. But last year, at NC State, 138 tackles. That was eighth most in the country. Six sacks, three interceptions. He was named a unanimous All-American. First team, All-ACC, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and also won the Butkus Award given to the nation's top linebacker. Then here in Charlotte, was awarded the Chuck but Bettinerick Award, which is honors the college football's best defensive player. He was among the best defensive players in college football and considered by the people who award the Chuck Bettinerick Award. He was the best defensive player in college football last year, an outstanding player in someone who I really admire for the way that he was able to lead state and the way he's able to bounce back from injuries. And that's the thing. We're only having this conversation, I feel, about, about Peyton Wilson because of the injuries that he suffered. He tore an ACL back in high school, then got to state later on that summer and had another setback with a knee, had to sit out the entirety of his first year down there in Raleigh, comes back, plays well, especially during that 2020 season. He was the first team all ACC performer. was outstanding. Then in 2021 has another injury to his shoulder misses the rest of the season after only playing two games and comes back the following year in 22 was okay playing with, Drake Thomas, who was a first-team All-ACC player, and Isaiah, um, God, I forgot Isaiah's not last name, but he was also out. Isaiah Moore, who was also great for State in the middle of that defense. And then this past season, he was all everything for Tony Gibson, Dave Doran, and all the Wolfpack there for a team that was good. They may not have hit the expectations that they have on, on an annual basis that are kind of out of whack for a program that's not done anything really in history, but he was really good for them this past year. Sorry for the, the shot there, State fans. Like, I just can't help it. I would love to see him be a Carolina Panther. Mel Kuyper Jr. has him rated as his number three linebacker. I think that's insane. Pro Football Focus has him 27th on their big board, and I think that's exactly where he should be on anyone's big board. Peyton Wilson is a first-round talent. He's a first round talent who may go into the third round, like Jordan Reed told us on Monday, because of the medicals. I don't know what they are as far as what his knee looks like. And when they look at a scan, I don't know what it look, I don't want I don't know what it says. I'm also not a I'm not a doctor. So even if I did see the scan of his knee, I have no idea. I could say that's a knee. That looks like a bone. Maybe that's a ligament. I don't know. I wouldn't know what I'm really looking at, other than I'm told it's a knee. So I I couldn't sit here and tell you what the issue is. Panthers med team they can look at it and they know and every other team in the nfl that's look at his medicals because they were at the combine they know and if he's going to go in the third round it's probably because they think there's something wrong with that knee but do you need peyton wilson to be a long term like okay let's see he's just not going to be a 10-year player in the nfl he's gonna be 24 co coincidentally on april 21st the same day shaq thompson turns 30 Peyton Wilson is going to be 28 by the end of his rookie deal. And then he's going to be 29 whenever he plays the second contract he has in the NFL. This is someone you bring in to be your starter or at least a rotational guy. If he comes in this year for the next four seasons, and then you sign him for a couple more years after that, you got him for six years. And if everything works out perfectly, I think Peyton Wilson is absolutely worth the gamble for the Carolina Panthers and for any team that's interested in him because I believe he's a first round talent in that without the injuries, he's not even, he's in the NFL already. He would have been in the NFL two years ago without the injuries that he suffered, maybe even three years ago because of how old he is. Cause he's 24. Yeah. So he could have, he should have been in there three years ago. If he wouldn't have torn his ACL back in high school. And if he didn't have a setback as soon as he got to state, and if he hadn't hurt his, his shoulder before in 2021, he would have been in the league by now. He would have already been, I believe a pro bowler because he has the instincts and he showed the combine. He has the speed 4.4340. I don't get caught up in 40 times. I don't give a rip about how fast some guys run. Cause you already know they're fast. Why does it matter? And that's what Trevor Sigma told us. Don't count trades twice. If you already think of players fast and they show you you're fast, that's great. I, I didn't know how fast Peyton Wilson was. I knew that he had great instincts. And now that I can see he can run a 4.43 in his underwear, that gets me excited as well. Not the underwear part, but the speed part of it all. Peyton Wilson's a stud. And hell, if 65 comes and if he's on the board and say the Panthers already got their wide receiver or their center or their edge, maybe even corner, like you're not going to get all four, of course, but they have they feel good about 
the two guys they take, they've taken there at 33 and 39 if they do stay there, and they get to 65. And that board says Peyton Wilson, linebacker, NC State, as their top available player. I don't know how you pass that up. I really don't. He looks like a Carolina Panthers linebacker. And he's from the state. And he loves Luke Keekley. Like, does that matter? No. The tape does. And the tape tells me that this is the best linebacker in the draft. And you can get him in the third round, third round at 65. Robbery. So, yeah, Peyton Wilson, sign me the hell up. But there are other options, and the Panthers may feel more comfortable with these options based off of the medicals, which, again, I don't have any view of. So let's talk about the other options. Potentially, the Panthers decide to wait until day three to take a linebacker here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. I feel like it should be Peyton Wilson or Buss. But that's not how I think the Carolina Panthers are going to go about it and how any NFL team should go about the draft, per se, especially at that position. If it's quarterback, say you're uh, New England and you want Jaden Daniels or Drake May, say you want one of those two guys. They're considered to be, and J.J. McCarthy's up there, but say it's Drake or Jaden Daniels. Say you want Drake May, and Washington Drake takes Drake May, and that was your or bus quarterback. I don't, you don't believe in Jaden Daniels. You don't believe in JJ McCarthy. Then sure. That logic can make sense, especially at a position. That's the most important, but also the most overvalued position in football. I can get that when it comes to a linebacker in day two, of the draft, well, uh, entire league passed up on this player for an entire day and felt like he was not worthy of first round pick. So you probably can't think, or bust with somebody. But for me, when it comes to the other needs on the roster and how linebacker is not, at least in my opinion, chief among them, if it's not Peyton Wilson, I'm not all that interested in taking a linebacker in the draft this year. But there are players who I would be interested in the Panthers potentially taking, looking at Mel Kuyper Jr.'s top 10 off-ball linebackers. There's Edron Cooper out of Texas A&M, Junior Colson out of Michigan, an outstanding defense that they had this past season. Peyton Wilson, he has number three, as I mentioned earlier on the show. Number four, Cedric Gray out of Archer Kale High School, of course, played at North Carolina. Then Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson. The Panthers have never in their history after playing at Clemson. They've never drafted a Clemson Tiger, and there have been plenty of Clemson Tigers to draft over the last 10 years of Dabo having that thing while he had it rolling until recent times, not taking transfers, that thing's not rolling. There's another college football uh, take for y'all out there for the Clemson fans. Sorry about that. But uh, I love Trotter Jr. There's Bookie Watson out of Mississippi State. Literally never heard about him, him ever. Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Some dude out of Washington whose last name, whose name I just cannot pronounce. Uh, Maris Luafu out of Notre Dame. Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State. Of those, the guy I'd be the most interested in is Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Why? Well, his name is Jeremiah Trotter. <laughs> his father was an outstanding player in the NFL, but I also watched him the last couple of years at Clemson. I think he can be more than just an off-ball linebacker. He was pretty solid when it came to rushing the passer up the middle, even off the edge in those blitz packages that were called uh, the last couple seasons where it's been Wes Goodwin as their defensive coordinator at Clemson or as Brent Venables. I think he's someone who already has a pedigree. And we, we have J.C. Horn here in Carolina. And when J.C.'s healthy, we know what he can do. And he had a pedigree of his dad being Joe Horn, having played in the NFL. And Jeremiah has the same pedigree of his dad being Jeremiah Trotter and having played in the NFL and played at a high level and been a leader. And he was a leader at Clemson. And that defense, while the offense has struggled at Clemson, the defense has maintained at a high level. Has it been top five every year? No, but they still maintain at a high level and been a big reason why that team has not completely fallen off after not having the quarterback play that you came accustomed to with Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence down there in Tigerland. I love Jeremiah Trotter Jr. I also like Cedric Gray. I like Trotter more than Gray. And sometimes I feel bad saying that, just being a Carolina fan. But, hey, I'm here to do a Panthers podcast and give you my honest opinion. I think Jeremiah Charter Jr. is a better player. Now, said Gray was the only good thing about that North Carolina defense over the last two seasons. If you can say anything is good about it, it was certainly him. He came up with some timely interceptions in some of those games, especially playing against Sam Hartman and Wake Forest over the last couple of seasons. Tackling machine. He did struggle his first year as a starter back during the 2021 season tackling but came back in 22 was rock solid was rock solid again in 2023 good speed not the biggest player trotter and wilson are both taller 
and heavier than Cedric Gray. That's just been what the new build of a linebacker is. He could be kind of a smaller guy. And he played, I believe it played like safety back at high school at AK. Then had to be transitioned to a linebacker once he got to college at North Carolina. And it worked out for him. He's going to be drafted, maybe drafted round three, or he's going to be early day three. But that's somebody who I'd be interested in. Of course, Charlotte Kid, that's nice. But it's really Peyton Wilson, then like Jeremiah Trotter. Though, like, though, especially just looking at at that point in time, like Cooper from AM is probably gone. Colson's going to be gone, I would imagine, by the time the Panthers would be interested if they're going to wait until day three. I think Trotter could potentially be there. And who knows? Maybe they want to trade back and get somebody at the linebacker spot instead. But truly for me, it's Peyton Wilson, and I'm not totally that interested in taking someone else. I think they can live this year with Shaq. And with Josie Jewell now, if something happens to one of those guys, they're probably not in a great situation, whether it's Cherilis or Villain or Wooten. I don't know who steps up and is a starter in that situation. I would probably prefer Chandler Wooten. But yeah, the Panthers are going to have to dress linebacker. I just don't know if they need to do it now. Would it be wise? You decide. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all, subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right here on the show, Locked On Panthers, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions. Either at me or DM me to get your questions into me right now. Don't wait. Get them right now to me, at Julian Council. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always and forever. Keep pounding and I'll talk to y'all on Thursday.